everyone, it's Liz here from Castle Handmade. Welcome to my Castle Handmade Crochet Podcast. Uh, this is episode six, so welcome. Um, it's been a while since I've made a video. Um, there's been a lot going on and then all of a sudden a whole month has passed and yeah, here we are. So sorry if you've been looking for one of my videos. Um, uh, Life just got in the way. We um, had a bit of time off and managed to get away for a little bit. Uh, and then life got a little hectic and things have been um, not the way they are usually running along. Uh, but now things have settled and are back to normal. So I thought it was a good time for me to um, make a podcast this afternoon. Uh, so it, we've got really lovely weather at the moment. Um, here in the southern highlands of New South Wales, where I am in Australia, uh, it's autumn and it's they're telling us that there's going to be a cold snap coming. Um, but at the moment, it's a sunny day. It's um, just really lovely outside. We've had a bit of rain, uh, so everything looks nice and fresh and green. So, yeah, I hope you're doing well wherever you are. Uh, this little crochet podcast is where I chat about everything crochet so it's about all the projects i'm working on and ideas i have um, i teach crochet and i also design patterns so sometimes i chat a little bit about that um, otherwise it's really just about the projects i'm working on and sharing you know some of the yarns that i'm using and and some techniques and things that i'm doing so welcome if it's your first time joining i hope you enjoy uh, for those that have uh, tuned in before, uh, thank you for coming back. I hope you like what you see. I feel really nervous and um, a bit rusty again today. I think it's because I'd left it so long in between takes, as they say. Um, and so hopefully I warm up again and um, I get through showing you everything that I want to show you. Now, uh, because we had so much time between podcasts, I have a lot of finished items to show you. Um, so I'm going to start with those today. Uh, now, I'm just going to have a sip of tea because already I feel like I'm racing through my words. <laughs> um, right, first project that I have finished is the Finley Cable Hat. Now, I was showing you this little baby hat on the last episode. In fact, I thought I had shown you the finished um, beanie uh, because I feel like I finished it so long ago uh, but then I had a look back on episode 5 and I hadn't finished it yet so here's my finished cable beanie all the details for the yarns that I used and the pattern will all be in the, the links below but this one was so much fun I really enjoyed making this it was a really quick make for me um, and I think I'll be making it again in some other sizes. So really happy with how that came up. Um, yeah, so I hope you like it as well. Uh, I've got more details about this in previous episodes when I was working on it. So I won't go into those details again. Um, but just wanted to show you it all finished. Then that's finished item number one. I have finished item number two as well. Let me see if I can find it. I've got a big stack of them. Finished item number two is the ripple blanket that I was working on. So I ended up finishing it off uh, over the last couple of weeks. All my ends are woven in and everything is finished. I'm so happy with how this one worked out. Um, those of you that have watched before will remember I was talking about this yarn that I'm using is like an acrylic yarn that was gifted to me and I wasn't really enjoying having it on my hook and um, it was just just not what I'm used to. It was sticking and, and things, but I decided to persevere. The colours looked really good and it was, you know, starting to work up really well. So this, um, again, all the, the details are in the links below, but this is a pattern by Lucy from Attic 24 and um, it's the, I think it's called the Neat Ripple Pattern. Really simple and easy um, ripple stitch and really effective too. I was, I just randomly um, did the, the thickness of the stripes. So occasionally I'd do just two rows. Another time I'd do three or four. 
um, and I was just swapping and changing the colour of the yarn between the light grey, dark grey and the, the cream. So there was no, um, what's the word I'm looking for, there was no planned layout of this, um, it was just whatever I picked up at the time. So I'll have to take some photos of that and pop it up um, at the end so you can see how big it is. It's probably the size of a single bed. Um, it's quite long and I think it's going to work well as a blanket um, to have on the lounge at night time while watching telly. Um, still haven't fully decided. I was going to gift it back to the person that had purchased the yarn for me, um, but I'm not sure now. <laughs> um, so I'll, yeah, I'll have a think about that and um, probably decide soon what's happening with it. But that was finished project number two. <laughs> so pleased that I've got some finished things to show you, especially when it's been a whole month in between um, episodes. So it's nice to have something substantial to show you. Finished item number three, which I am really, really happy with, um, is my rainbow solid granny square blanket. So it's hard to see it or it's hard to see it here because you can't see the whole blanket. So I will put up some photos at the end that will show you the whole blanket um, and how I positioned all the colors and the squares. So basically what I did was I've done a bit of a rainbow, like a graduation through the rainbow colors. So a bit of like a, like a rainbow fade kind of thing. Started with the yellows and oranges, moved into reds, pinks and purples, and then they moved into blues and greens and back around. So that's just a solid granny square pattern. Um, the way I've done the squares, I've done one, two, three rows of colour and then one row of the cream. And then I joined all the squares using a flat slip stitch braid or flat slip stitch join, sorry. Um, and that just is just a really neat finish. And then as the edge of the the border around the edge, I chose orange as my little standout colour. And I've done a, a bobble, like a bobble stitch edge. So it's just like three slip stitches and then a bobble, three slip stitches and a bobble. Uh, I, the hard decision was choosing what colour to do as the edge. I'm usually not a person that picks orange as a, as a colour, like I really don't use orange in in many things at all. Um, but I decided it needed like a really bright pop of color. So I picked the orange and started working on it. And I was, I was confident that it was gonna look good around the whole edge. And so I persisted with it, even though um, my two little boys disagreed with my choice of orange. They, they kind of looked at it and went, oh, oh I don't know about the orange. Uh, <laughs> I guess they're not used to me using that sort of color. But once it, I'd finished it and it was all blocked and, and looking beautiful, they agreed that orange was the, the choice. It was the correct choice for that. So really pleased with this one. Um, it's a, a generous size um, baby blanket. It's um, just going to become a shop sample um, here in my studio. And I think eventually I will gift it um, to a special baby. But for now, um, it's just staying as a, a shop sample. Um, yeah, and it's nice just to have a collection of blankets that I've made myself um, and ones that I'm actually going to keep and, and pass on to some special people. So really pleased with that. Um, I think it's a great way of using up scraps. It's um, Each little square doesn't really take that much yarn. So if you do have lots of colours, um, it is a great way of putting together like a scrappy rainbow blanket. Um, yeah, and it's, it's been an ongoing project for quite a while now, um, but there was never any end in sight. It was always just oh, a few more squares, a few more squares, and yeah, nice to have it all together and finished as a blanket. So really pleased with that one. Um, the photos that I took um, of it so that you could see the whole blanket, um, I hung it up on our clothesline and it just looked really pretty hanging out there. Um, so nice to see all the colours, which is makes me happy. <laughs> um, that was finished item number three and then I have finished item number four 
And this one's really exciting because this is not only a finished item, it's a finished pattern and a finished video tutorial. So um, I spoke about this last time, but I was working on this pattern for some wrist warmers. Let me pop them on. Oh, looks a bit silly over my watch, but um, this is a pattern of, of wrist warmers um, created using a chunky 14 ply yarn. And I've done like a faux, a faux knit stitch kind of look to that. Anyway, this pattern is called the Rustic Wrist Warmers. It's a free written pattern on Ravelry and it is also a free video tutorial up on YouTube. So you'll find that on my channel as well. Um, yeah, it's really quick and easy. Um, you only use about 100 grams of 14 ply wool and you've got yourself a pair of mittens. So really fun and easy and a nice little winter make. And yeah, hope you enjoy them. Oh, now all of those finished items and of course, you would expect that I have some works in progress as well. <laughs> um, now, within that month that I haven't, um, that you haven't seen me, um, I've started quite a few new projects. You can see one behind me here. Uh, I actually put together a little video um, prior to us leaving on our little trip, um, just showing you what I pack um, crochet wise um, when I'm, you know, taking a little break and I'm traveling with my crochet. So I'll actually, um, I'll put that, this little video in now um, so that you can see the new projects that I'm starting and what I pack with me when I go away. Um, yeah, and then I'll chat to you afterwards about the progress that I've made on all these items. Hi everyone, uh, we're taking a little trip for a couple of days and there's going to be a bit of car travel and um some time where I'll get to crochet so I thought I'd show you what I pack um, and what I travel with in the car uh, and what new projects I'm going to be hooking away on um, while we're away. Okay so first of all I'll show you um, a project you've already seen so this is the Saga Squares. I am taking some yarn with me for that um, so that I can work on that. It's not going to be one that I work on in the car. The mosaic crochet is a little tricky for me to um, keep looking down at um, in the car so this one will be packed away in the boot and I'll pull it out when we're at our destination so all I've put in there are a few different colors of um, yarn that I'm going to be using I've popped the pattern printed pattern the chart in there as well um, my hook and I'm also going to pack one of the squares just so I can double check my work as I'm going so that's all in this bag here. Um, then there, I'm taking two other projects with me and both of them are new ones. Uh, I'm going to be working on this hat here which is the Thatcher hat by Deanne Ramsey. Um, the yarns I've chosen to use for this one are a four ply fingering yarn. Um, this is a um, this is Fiori sock yarn um, in Hellebore. The colours aren't great in here <laughs> and I'm going to be holding that double with some mohair. So um, I've already wound the ball. Here we go. I was going to video me doing that too but it didn't happen. <laughs> um, like I said the colour's not showing up great here but it's a, a grey with some purpley mauve tones. So I'm going to be using that one and that mohair and what I've done is I've done my swatch, I've checked my gauge and I've started the um, first row which is the, the chain row and worked into that and now I'm set up to work on this one in the car. Um, this is going to be an easy one that I don't need to look down at. Um, I also don't need to count. Um, I'm working on the band so I'll just be able to sit and hook away um, until it reaches the right um, width. Oh, camera's not working too well there. Anyway, um, <laughs> you get the idea. So that's one project that I'm working on. Now what I've done is I've actually, um, that's my purchased um, pattern, but what I've done is I've photocopied it um, because I like writing all over my patterns and because I'm traveling with it, it's going to get all squashed up. So I've um, photocopied it so that I can then use it, um, fold it up and pop it into a bag. I'm going to be popping that one into just a little drawstring bag 
because uh, that'll be able to go in my handbag and I'll be able to work on that one on the go. I also started another project over here. Um, I've been wanting to have a play around with this jumper and I decided that um, I could work on this one just as something fun while I'm away. So what I did last night is start, I did like the cast on and began it um, and now I'm up to about round three so it's going to be easier for me to just pick up and work away on. Um, yeah, so for that one I'm using Milpost Merino. I'm having a play with the different colours, so it's likely that this one's going to get undone once I get home. Um, <laughs> or maybe it's going to work well and I'll keep working on it. So um, anyway, that's another project. That one's going to go into um, this big bag here. And that'll also sit in the car with me in case um, I get stuck on this one. Um, now, what else do I take? Um, so in my bags, I always put the yarn, the pattern and a hook. Um, that I'm going to be using and then I take another little selection of goodies with me hopefully that's uh, okay there so I've just popped them into a little pencil case this time tape measure is going with me it's a little retractable one I'm taking a pair of scissors I also take a mixture of different hooks so I, I'm taking some that are either side of the pattern that I'm working on so um, Couple of, I'm using fives and four millimeter hooks, so I'm taking four and a half, three and a half, um, and I've thrown in some extras as well. Um, I always take a pen and pencil. I've packed in some post it notes in case I need to make notes on any of the patterns, and then I have a little tin here that um, it's quite messy at the moment because I'm in a bit of a hurry. <laughs> Um, but that's filled with large eyed needles, stitch markers, there's even buttons and safety pins and a few other things as well. So that's all I take with me. Um, I've said it before, um, crochet is a really portable craft um, and there's not many things that you really need to take with you. So um, basically these will all pack away and I'll just have this one bag for when we're in the hotel and this other bag for when we're in the car. Well, I hope you've enjoyed looking at those and I'll keep you updated on the progress of those patterns um, as our holiday progresses. Okay, so here uh, is what I've done so far on those projects. So first up, we've got the Saga squares for the mosaic crochet blanket that I'm making um, for my son. Now, I need to block these again because they've been sitting in a bag and they've been curling up in that again. But basically, all I've done is just a few more squares and I've just done them in a few other colors so I'm using the light gray on all of the squares and then I'm just changing up the accent color that I've got with the light gray so at the moment I've got oh, six different colors that I'm working with so um, the light gray is called robot so this is in the I don't have one to show you but it's the Morrison Sons eight ply estate um, it's a 100% uh, Australian wool. It's machine washable and it comes in lots and lots of colors. I stock about 50 colors in my store here. Um, it's my go-to for blankets and I just love using it. I love how it washes up. I love the wear of it. Um, yeah, so the, the light gray, as I was saying, is Robot, the name of that color. And then these are the colors that I've chosen so far. So I've got the that um, blue there that's called Storm. 
I have that dark sort of charcoal -y gray, which is called Thundercloud. That one there, that blue is called Aegean. That is sky blue. This one here is called Swimming. And then this blue here is called Midship Blue. So a few different shades of blue heading into more of a gray. Um, at the moment, I think I'm just going to stick with the six colors. The, like the six different blues and greys and then the light grey in between them all. Um, I'm going to do a few more of each square. At the moment I've only got one of each colour. So I'll do a few more of each square and then I'll have a play around with the layout and what it looks like and I think I'll decide from there whether it needs any more colours. But these were the colours that um, Cameron uh, decided on. He liked these blues and greys. Um, and yeah, so I, I'm going to try and stick to his requests as much as I can, <laughs> seeing as it is a blanket for his 10th birthday. Um, but he's, he's easily swayed. If I decide that I think I need a couple more colours, then I'm sure he'll go along with that as well. So that's the progress that I've made on the Saga squares. They're not working up as quickly as I had hoped, but that is only because I, um, I'm not doing them regularly enough, so I think I'm like doing a square, putting it down and not getting back to it for another week. So um, I have to keep referring to the pattern. It's not really, um, I'm not retaining the pattern in my mind <laughs> the way that I normally do. So um, yeah, I think if I devote a little bit more time to it, then um, it'll work up a lot quicker and um, I won't have to be referring back to the chart and the pattern all the time. So. I think I'll enjoy it a bit more then too. But that's how the Saga squares are going. Now, the next project that you saw in my video that I took with me and began um, when we had our little trip into Sydney uh, was the Thatcher hat, which is a beanie by the designer Deanne Ramsey. It's, she's also called Adaday Designs. And look at all my progress. <laughs> so when you saw it last, it was only just the um, the started the starting chain in the first row and so I've worked up the band which oh it's a beautiful band so it's actually um, you work the band double the width that you normally would and then you fold it over um, and work the next the start of the hat so that actually creates like a thick band and it is so comfy um, it's got a really nice feel to it working with the mohair held double with um, a sock yarn is really lovely. Beautiful on my hook, but then the feel of this, um, I just can't stop touching it, it's really lovely. <laughs> so that's the main body of the hat now. So the, um, the ribs done, the main body of the hat is done, and now I'm ready to start decreasing and bringing the crown in. So not really much longer to go with this one. Um, I'll have it finished this weekend, hopefully. Um, and then this one is going to be mine. <laughs> so I'll probably put a pom-pom on the top of it, nice big fur pom-pom, um, and it'll be a shop sample for a little while while I show customers. Um, and then I think it'll be a beanie for myself this winter. I'm, I'm usually not one to really wear beanies. I prefer to wear, um, I just don't think they look good on me. So instead I wear like um, ear warmers or a headband just to keep warm. But this one feels so good. I actually don't care what I look like in it. Um, I'm going to just be happy to wear this because it's going to be nice and warm and cosy. The basket weave stitch, which is the main stitch for the, the body of that hat there. Um, it looks so good in the with the mohair. It's just, um, it's really just highlighted the stitch really well. I'm really happy with my choice of yarn. Super happy with that. And I don't think it'll be very long until that one's finished. So really enjoyed that one. Um, and then, oh, well, I keep forgetting that it's sitting behind me. <laughs> Here is the other project that I started um, before we went away. And so this one is the Far Away Jumper by Iron Lamb. And it's a circular yoke. Um, I'm using the Millpost Merino, which is beautiful and soft. I have finished the yoke um, and now I'm about to split for the sleeves um, and yeah, so split the, and just start working on the, 
little join join under the arm and then I'll work on the body and then I'll have the sleeves to work on next. So that's coming up really well. Um, I'm not really, I, like I don't really wear many jumpers, but I would like to wear this one over some dresses and things in winter. So I'm hoping that's what the fit will be like, um, that I'll be able to wear it over jumper, uh, over dresses, sorry. Um, but we'll just see. Um, I'm not sure. I really wanted to try it. I really like the idea of wearing it over dresses. So hopefully once it's finished, um, it will look good like that. Uh, it's, I find it really hard with garments because um, I'm just not confident in trying new styles of clothing um, to, just to wear. And so um, making a jumper is just so different to going to a store, trying it on and buying it. Um, so what I should have really done is tried on a ready-made jumper to see if I liked that style and fit before I launched into making my own version. Um, but I'm just kind of doing it the other way and just jumped straight in. So <laughs> we'll see how I go. Um, I really should do it the other way and try on the ready-made item first, but I haven't and it's looking really pretty. I'm really happy with the colors. Um, yeah, so we're just gonna have to wait and see. <laughs> um, and that's about it. I had lots of, I feel like I've rushed through that again, but with all those finished projects, I was just excited to show you and then um, starting all those new ones. So lots going on. Um, I'd love to hear what you think about all the things I've shown you today. And I would also love to hear about what you're working on. Um, it's always great to hear what other crocheters are doing and, um, you know, tell me about a new pattern you've found and um, some new yarn you're using. It's, yeah, just a really lovely to, to share um, within the community, you know, little bits and pieces about, about our craft. So uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully I haven't um, rushed through that too much and haven't appeared to be too nervous. <laughs> um, I'm hoping to get back to my regular two weekly schedule of, of doing the podcasts um, and then I won't be as nervous. So <laughs> thanks again for watching and we'll catch up again soon. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.